What's going on guys, what's cracking? Drinking ice, go Keystone right now. I got Sean behind the camera, Sean GSX of course. So today is battery relocation day. It's been the biggest eyesore. I know you all hate it. It's finally getting done. I know, congratulations to me. Yes, yes, I know. Um, so what we're doing is putting in the Odyssey battery. This is a PC 1700. Um, nice, I believe the cold cranking amps on this bad boy is 570. 570 cold cranking amps, I think factory, the Toy Super requires like 520, so it's still over that. Uh, now you're gonna have some voltage drop, I believe, going from front to back, but if you come over here and take a look, uh, this is the battery. Odyssey also supplied this badass looking billet bracket. It's pretty trick. Uh, the only thing we did do is we had to cut it down uh, just for the fact that it sat a little too high, and because we we're turning it on its side, we had to cut it and weld it. Another reason for that is this just barely fits under the factory, well not factory, but my aftermarket trunk man I had made. So the trunk man will sit right over top of this nice and flush, just obviously sitting on it's not gonna hurt anything, but I didn't want it sitting above, I didn't want this to be seen. Then also on the side of it, it has drilled holes here, there and there, and then it has two on this side, there and there. Now I'm gonna drill a hole here for this one, and drill here a hole on this side, and then I'm gonna use a rib nut gun, which I'll show you here in a minute, to make actual rivets in the actual body so we can screw in and out, and not use self-tapping screws, because I absolutely despise those, and that's the car dropping snow off it, and the background making all the noise. But I absolutely despise those, but I'll show you that here in two seconds. Yeah. Sean wants to show you that he's also drinking a beer too. My oh man, got the FCS, FCS race, Honda boy stuff. Um, but what we got here also is zero gauge OFC oxygen free copper wire. Uh, it's all black, I didn't buy any red wire for power or ground. Um, I'm gonna use these red labels and then black labels where they're grounds. Doesn't really matter because I'm only running one wire up to the front, no, but I just think it looked nice. Plus I prefer the black wire everywhere because I think it looks prettier than running this big giant red wire up to the engine bay. I think that's ugly. I don't think it's necessary. So using this for the entire car, I got 25 feet. Um, another thing I want to mention guys, when this is all said and done, I'm going to offer this as a kit so you don't have to worry with it. I'm going to take care of all of it for you uh, if you need to, or you can make it yourself do like I'm doing today, but you got to buy the tools to do it. The other thing I'm going to be doing is using a waterproof um, breaker circuit. So instead of a traditional where you have the giant breakers in it, and if they do go bad, you have to keep extra in your car. This is marine style. So you have this, if it does go off, like you do have a surge and it clicks off like that, you just open up the back of your hatch. Click that back up and on your way you go. No need for fuses anymore, no need to deal with any of that. Pretty trick little piece. Um, they're a little bit pricey, uh, depending which ones you get. Uh, this one's not too bad just because I got it off Amazon. Uh, I'm gonna see how it goes and test it, make sure everything works for you. I got 250 amps. Some people like 300 amps, I just want 250. Um, this is your sale, fail safe, right? You know, you don't wanna put as, any more heat in this wire than you have to, right? Uh, that's how fires are started. So 250 is where I'm safe with right now. If I have to, I'll go to 300, depending how much the starter is pulling amps uh, when trying to crank up. Now, the next thing we have here is a tool that I use to actually make this first crimp, which I'll be showing you here later. Uh, this is a hammer style. This is what actually crimps these giant crimps like this. And no, it is not fun. Uh, it takes some serious effort <laughs> with Sean. Yes, it does, yeah, for sure. It, it takes some serious oomph. Oh. Lastly here, we have the rib nut gun. I've never used one of these, so you guys are gonna watch me and experience this. Um, it does come with its own rivets, or rib nuts with it. Uh, here's the gun itself, I should say gun nut. They, they do have gun side, it's literally a crank like this, this is the bigger one, get more leverage on it. Uh, literally, you screw the rib nut on there, you put it down inside the drilled area, squeeze it out, press down in just like you would a rivet, it crimps around the area, and now you can screw in a bolt in and out. It's a pretty trick little piece. Um, Jose Ballard of Kaiser Motorsports told me about that specific one. He said he has an actual American made one that didn't hold up as well as this one. So I'm taking his word for it. Now he did have another one he sent me that's I think only $20 more than this to crimp it. Uh, and you wouldn't have to take all this wiring off. Again, you guys don't have to worry about it. But uh, yeah, this is cheap. It's like 20 bucks versus the one he sent me is like 60. That was after the fact. Thanks a lot, Jose. So here's the reason why. Let me go ahead and show you. God dang it, let's go. Can't wait till that's in that engine bay. Woo! Oh, Lord have mercy. So if we come over here, love Odyssey. Love these guys so much. Everything about them has been great. It has been perfect. I haven't had a single issue. But, blacked out engine bay with a hint of a blue accent, and I got a random red battery. Just doesn't work for me. Alan Kohler at Odyssey Battery was kind enough to send me a new battery. He said, look, man, I completely understand. I understand the look you're going for. So sent me this other Odyssey battery. Uh, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this. Uh, I've never put it on a battery tender. It's set for three months. You go to crank it. No, it's perfect. Every time. Awesome. Uh, but we just decided, that, hey, I want to go to something else. I want to put it in the back, clean up the engine base some. He's totally cool with it. He was kind enough to send me another battery. 
Um, so what we gotta do here today is one, get this battery out. Number two, figure out where we're gonna mount that in the trunk here. So Sean, if you come here to the back. So if you guys can see down here, we have custom fuel tank cover. This is my relays for my fuel pump. And then we got this empty space here off to the left. That's where I plan on mounting the battery. Now, the one thing I will have to do is either cut this up or completely remove this piece. I'd rather not remove it completely. What I'm probably gonna do is section off the piece of foam here, probably cut it right in this area, just so I can actually uh, ground out some metal and actually use another rib nut there and uh, put that for my ground. Now you wanna be very close with your ground. You wanna make sure you have a proper ground or you're gonna have some fire issues. So yes, you do need to ground down the metal. No, you're not gonna be happy about it, but it does need to be done. Um, and I'll show you all that here today, guys, in this upcoming video. All right, guys, sorry, but the, uh, we have the heater on over here. Sean, come down here. Uh, we went ahead and marked. I started drilling here. We got one mark here and then one silver dot over here. Um, unfortunately, it is slightly uneven, but the way it's sitting, it'll be okay. Uh, we're going to have longer bolts, and I'm going to show you how to put the rib nuts in here. Uh, what we're going to do here uh, is drill this out. I did put a piece of blue tape on this to make sure I don't go further. and like just I'm going slow, too, because you don't want to puncture the tank. Uh, you got to be as careful as possible here, so I'm going as slow as I possibly can to do this. Um, so if we come here, Sean, and... Guys, so what we've done now is drill the two holes that we need um, for to actually mount the bracket itself, and then we've already drilled a hole and put a rib nut in for the ground. So Sean, if you want to come over here and take a little closer look, we've got a hole here and here. And you're probably wondering, well, Ryan, they're side by side and off to the side. Well, that's just how the bracket system works out for this. So, and you can see straight down then to the ground. If you go much further over, you're going to hit the tank and we don't want to take that chance. So hole here, hole here. And then I went ahead and drilled a hole here in the frame. Now, a lot of guys use self-tapping screw. Again, I didn't want to do that. I drilled this the whole way through and then I used a stainless steel rib nut in there. And now I'm going to use a bolt so I can easily remove if needed. I just think this is a much better way of doing it. Um, now here, we've got to do the same. So just got to get the holes slightly bigger yet to put the uh, six millimeter nut that I need in there and uh, we should be good. Okay, so guys, this is the rib nut tool, okay? This is what we're using to clamp this down. I'm using an M6 by 1.0 rib nut. What you do is you screw this bad boy on, make sure these are completely open, screw that down as tight as you can get it, and we're gonna do this one here. Get that down in there as far as we can. Okay, get that down in there and then we <clears throat> clamp off like that Then use the top of it here to unscrew it. And now we've got a spot to bolt down. It's not going anywhere. Pretty neat little trick, and I use stainless steel rib nuts again, guys, because last thing you want to do is cheap out on this, and then it rusts out your car. Just buy the stainless steel one, spend an extra 20 bucks. All right, guys, I know I'm gonna be echoey right now, but here's what I, you can see how it crept from the bottom side. All right guys, so putting the battery back in now uh, without trying to pinch my hand. Ooh. Yes, there is better ways of doing that. Don't judge me. There we go. Now she's down in there. All clamped down. Now we put our plate on, making sure to face the Odyssey symbol towards me, per Sean's towards request. Towards the back, yes. Sean behind the camera has more OCD than I do. So, start these in. And uh, I did, again, have to lengthen, get different length cap screws for this because I had to cut the bracket to make it work for this application. And then where is... Now this side will put, draw it all down then. So now we're making the ground strap. 
Uh, there's only going to be one ground. Some people burn them up to the front, to the engine, and to the block. I'm not personally. Uh, I'm basing this off some other kits I've seen. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I did again is I have it actually tapped into the body there. I cut part of the foam. I wanted to keep as much foam as I could. There was a, already a low spot here. Cut the foam down, made just enough room so I could use this here. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to ground down some of the metal here. I wanted best, the best ground that I possibly can get. I'm not a big fan of that, but it needs to be done so it works. What I'm doing now is marking this. That first little bit was a little short, so I went a little bit longer just to be safe. And this gives me a nice little loop there. Uh, it's a nice transition. It doesn't have a lot. It's not too tight on this. So when I crank that down or this, it's not going to be loose. So I'm happy with that. Uh, next up, what I'll do is figure out a way to cut this because I've never cut this wire before. This end was already cut. I just took, I cut the sheathing off to then clamp it down. But I don't have anything to really cut this wire. So I have to look through my tools and see what do I have that's going to cut this. First off, God bless Keystem. Second, remember to take your ground strap off before you put your power wire on and touch the body. That is a no-no and sparks shoot everywhere. Don't be a dumbass, AKA me. So, what we've got here guys, ground strap is there, we're good, I'm putting that off to the side. Uh, that's all done, we've got our uh, power wire here to our uh, 250 amp switch. Now I've used one of the factory bolts that come with this little clamp down because I didn't want to drill in the body anymore. I hate that I had to already drill, so I'm already frustrated that I had to do that. So I used this to ground this out, ran as short as possible because I want these power wires, everything as short as possible, ran this from here down to here. And you're probably again wondering, Ryan, why are you using black? Power wires, I'm like, for me, it doesn't matter. You're never going to see it. These little red um, indicators are good enough for me. Plus it says plus and minus on the battery. You guys should be able to tell that. So that's good enough for me. Uh, the last thing we got to do is run one from here, the whole way up to the front yet, which is going to be time consuming. That's not going to happen today. So I'm going to try and get that done here tomorrow and we'll flip that to the part of the video. All right, guys, so Sean is left. I got crap all over my hands now, but Sean is left. Next thing we gotta do is get the car up in the air. Uh, I'll show you what I've done in the trunk too. I've already got the next power wire gone and I'm running it down through. It's gonna go under the car and up into the battery area. Uh, I actually have these powerhouse racing brackets, which I'll show you have an extra spot for the battery line that I can run up. And I'm gonna use some hose clamps, which I need to see which size I need to get. And I'll go out and get those today. So it's gonna sit a little loose. Obviously, I'm not gonna drive this anytime soon because of the weather, but I'm gonna go ahead and jack this up real quick and uh, let's go ahead and get this done. So I started running the wire here. Again, we've got power running from here down to our 250 amp block. Going from there, the other side goes down through this already grommeted hole. Now I cut an X slit in the grommet here and ran down through. Yes, I'm running underneath the car. And so through the car, um, I just think this will be an easier, cleaner look. You gotta remember too, all the factory wiring for this stuff is already on the exterior in the engine bay with the battery there. So this is not gonna hurt it. This is designed to be on the exterior of the car too. I made sure that the sheathing and stuff is meant for this. And now I'm gonna show you how I ran it underneath. Got my beautiful powerhouse racing exhaust. God damn, I love this exhaust. Look how perfect that fins are. Just so nice. So if we look up here, it's kind of hard to see. Can you see the black wire running there? It's coming out through there underneath the heat shield, just like the fuel lines are there. So if you guys are like, man, is that too close to the exhaust? The fuel lines go the same way. So no. And uh, then I ran up through this plastic piece here uh, where the brake lines and stuff were on this side and the fuel's on the other, so it separates it. And if you can see it comes out right there, see the electric line, the fuel lines are there. Now it's coming down and wrapping around and sitting down here on the ground. Now the next up is me routing it and zip tying it away and then using these powerhouse racing brackets here. Let's see if I can get up here for y'all. These nice powerhouse racing brackets have that extra spot right there and that's how I want to put the, the power lines right beside it there and run it the whole way down. Um, it's separated the whole way through and it should look pretty badass. When all, all right guys, so here's where we're at. I've got most of it done now. I'm pretty much 99% done. So battery back here, you can see your power goes down that hole. And from there, I got to get on my creeper and show you underneath. <laughs> Whew. 
Where's it go here? Hold on. From that hole, it goes through this plastic piece here, goes up over the body, use that to keep from anything touching it or rubbing. I don't want anything hard metal so that plastic won't hurt it. Then it comes down over the chassis here. See it back there a little bit away from the fuel lines. I wanted to keep them as far away as I could for the time being. Then it comes down right here, uses that extra slot in the powerhouse racing kit. Then use a zip tie just like I did the fuel lines. And then, sorry guys, it's tight down here. Runs the whole way down. As you can see here, down, down, and because there's spots where it's loose, I went ahead and used a zip tie up here, which I'll probably use another one back there just to be safe. Then I ran it through there. So it goes there, there's your fuel filter, it runs up against the body here, back behind the filter, runs up against the body behind the brakes, see the line there again, runs back behind the brake lines, and then on on top of the fuel rail, which I'll show you next. All right, and from here, guys, you can see the black wire right there. I use a cushion clamp right there. I don't like that it's on top of the frame rail, but it would have to come through this hole or through the frame rail. I don't want it down by this and rubbing it, so I'd rather be safe than sorry because it's back behind there, runs up there. I had to use one zip tie, the cushion clamp there, and now I'm about to cut the line itself. You can see I got a Sharpie there. Um, I went ahead and removed the factory power and everything here, and this is where it should go like so. That's where it gives me a little bit of play. I don't want it to be too tight, but I don't want it to be laying on there if I don't have to. Now, out here, I won't be using a red, even though it's a power. I'll be just putting a black um, covering on it because I think it'll look better. I don't need a bright red piece in there. I'm trying to get that red away from here. So that's where I need to cut next, and I'll be able to crimp this on. And I'll probably make a ground strap from the block to the chassis again, just to be safe, just, just to be safe. So I'll use a zero gauge, make a new one because, well, I've got extra cramps. Why not? Let's you know, do it right. Um, and then after that, we can try turning it on and hopefully this works. I'm definitely a little nervous, but I'm hoping this is okay. All right, guys, and the last thing I'm doing here is making a ground strap from the block to the chassis here. Um, is this overkill? Yeah, but I had extra wire and had extra crimps, so I'm like, you can't, I mean, grounds are not gonna hurt anything by going to a bigger ground, so might as well just put one of these bag boys on it. You won't be able to ever see it, and it's like a nice peace of mind. Um, I wish I could get a bigger bolt in there. I can only use 10 millimeters from what I can find in the frame because I don't want to drill into the frame up front, so I'm using an existing 10 millimeter hole, so it gives me something. Um, I might grind down some of the metal just so I get a better, oh, excuse me, connection, but so that's where we're at, but it does look hellaciously better. It's a giant hole there now. Um, it is, you gotta remember guys, this is all original paint in here, so might have to scuff some of this, might spray it with some paint, uh, just to make it look a little bit better, but this still looks a shitload better than what it did before. And, yeah, all black now. About to start up, and it uh, starts snowing here in Pennsylvania. It's just barely snowing. You can't even see it on camera, really, can you? So just dark, barely snow, we got ice everywhere. But we're gonna go ahead and open up the trunk here. I shut it, shut it, damn, I slammed it, damn it. So I gotta pop the trunk again. Just want this open just in case I need to check anything or if I have to emerge, you know, hit that, pull this off to get the power off of it, but see if the pump's okay here. So, uh, this is, uh, whew, here's the test. Make sure she's in neutral. Fuel pump, everything sounds good. Seems to be all right. All right, let's. Seems to start fine. Let's see what. Check everything over. Seems all right. Wow, that was the first try. Seems You have physical loads where I gotta worry, guys. So getting on the street will be the real test. But I just wanted to make sure everything's okay for right now. Seems to be okay. Um, hell yeah. So uh, we'll let it run here for a second. But good, it should be good. Well, guys, that's that. It is done. I'm uh, I'm happy. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm gonna do some testing once it gets warm here. I'm trying to squeeze between the cars because I have them way too close together. I got all this room back here. If I squeeze the cars together, why? Uh, sorry if I look like crap because I'm using old clothes today. But yeah, everything should be good. I'm gonna do some testing on the street once it gets a little bit warmer. I do wanna see if there's voltage drop or anything. Don't know if there will be, we'll find out. Another thing I need to do, which I'll show you in another video, is I need to take this out. There's a wire here going for the fuel pumps that run the whole way from the front to the back. 
and goes to that controller there. You can see this black wire right here. That's running the whole way to the front to the fuse box right now. Well, now I can cut that down and run it straight to the battery. So that's gonna be awesome. So I don't have to worry with that anymore. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, again, if you guys have ever seen this before, Jose Value from Kaizen Motorsports made this bad little boy. So if you guys need a fuel pump controller, you need to hit him up. It's all contained within this little box. I then use a factory mounting point because I hate drilling into the car. This is the first time I've actually drilled into the car and I wasn't too thrilled about it, but I knew I had to do it if I wanted it mounted down properly. Same with if I wanted proper ground, I wanted to put it into the frame rail. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, concerns, let me know down in the comments below. Um, think about making this into a kit. If that's something you're interested, let me know. Talk to you later, guys. Peace.